Hi everyone, I'm Zoe Caldwell and I'm here to show you some of the new features that you'll see on Lexus Plus. Uh, for one, um, you'll notice the screen is totally different now and we have these three databases that you can do your research in. So you have your typical legal research database, but we also have practical guidance resources as well as brief analysis tool for you to upload your own briefs and get some more um, expedited information uh, to help you further your research on any briefs you may be writing. Um, we're going to start by showing you uh, Lexis Answers. Now, we had Lexis Answers before, but now it's working even better. Um, this is where you type in a question uh, like, what is attorney-client privilege according to the Upjohn case? So maybe this is a case you're reading and you want a really quick answer as to what attorney-client privilege has to do with um, regarding this case, and I can run the search. Uh, Lexis Answers is a lot like Siri or Alexa. When you type in Lexis Answers and go to your regular results, you will see up at the top that we are pulling um, sharp answers just like Siri and Alexa would give you on the question that you ask. So uh, these are quick black and white answers that will help you spot the answer to your question very quickly. These aren't necessarily the best cases to cite in a memo, but they are the quick answers that Lexis can bring up to give you an uh, answer to the question you asked very fast. Uh, we have a new little pencil icon here to make changes. So I can say, you know what? I actually want to know more about the attorney-client privilege in California. So I type that in, and now I can be more specific to California, and my results will change. So just like on Siri and Alexa, if I want to be a little more specific with my question, then they will try to find an answer that's a little more specific. So now I want California law, and I just type that in, and I can get a quick answer on what attorney-client privilege is in California. All right, back up to the top of the screen, we're gonna run just a standard search right now. And I'll go back up to Lexus Plus. It will run a just typical search. Um, this time we're going to take a page out of Taylor Swift's life here um, when with this search. Uh, Taylor Swift had an issue with a radio DJ. She said that during a photo shoot, he slipped his hand underneath her skirt and she told management and they fired him. The DJ then sued Taylor for interference with the business relations for getting fired. So we're going to try to help Taylor out and run a little research on this issue. Um, you'll notice that I quoted the word fired and that's because I was getting a lot of results that said fired apartment. So if I want to make sure Lexus finds fired and not the word fire as in fire department that I can quote it and I did find that this was quite helpful in getting back better results so let's run the search and you'll see some of the new changes um, using the practical guidance that's now inside your results set of Lexis Plus so we have these categories that you've always seen off to the left hand side cases statutes but now you'll see two more and these are coming to you straight from practical guidance practice notes and articles and forms, clauses, and checklists. Uh, practice notes are written by the real uh, real attorneys. They're some of the gurus in their field. They're known for this area of law, and they've written notes to help you with your uh, understanding of a topic. They are similar to secondary materials, but they're usually a lot less cumbersome and straight to the point. They will give you the forms that you need as well if you wanted to start um, this particular task. So typically for students, I would say if you're seeing some practice notes results popping up, you might want to take a quick peek and see if any of them are helpful before you go to secondary material. So in the past, we've always said when you need to start a research assignment, start with secondary, but now you can kind of take a peek and practice notes and see if something there is answering your question before you have to come into a more cumbersome database like secondary materials. Uh, this is a typical result screen that you'll see on Lexis Plus, and if I scroll through, you're seeing the results. Um, they're just a little bit cleaner results than you've seen before. The case map button or these color-coded answers are still here for you, so you can bounce around and check out where your terms are showing up. Now, case maps before was only in cases, but now we have these maps on all of the areas of law, and I love um, that they're in secondary materials now. So when we pu pull open secondary materials, these 
um, color-coded terms are still showing up so you can bounce around and see where your terms are and make a decision as to whether or not this is something that you want to read more of or scroll on to the next result. So that's your search term maps coming to you in more than one area of law. They're now coming to you in uh, all of these sources and not just case law. Okay, so let's go back to cases now really quickly and I'll show you some of the changes to your Ravel view. Uh, if you remember, oh, one moment before I show you Ravel view, I'm going to edit the search. Uh, the reason why I'm going to take a pause to Ravel view is we didn't get a lot of search results back. And if I take a look at my specific court from California, you'll see, you know what? I only got seven from California. This isn't a lot of results. So there's some sort of problem going on here that I want to take a look at. Um, it won't be helpful to me to go to Ravel view with such few results. So I'm going to go into my little search tree here, which is new on Lexis Plus. It's called search tree. And when I pop it open, you can now see where my term are showing up um, and how many results I get for each term. So when my terms are showing up on their own, I have a fair amount of results. When interference is with the fired, I'm getting still a decent amount, but it's when I add in sexual harassment that I'm getting some problems to my research. So now I can come on in and edit that part and say, you know what, maybe I'll try adding in sexual harassment later, but for the get-go, um, when I get started, I'm just gonna leave it a little more generic and you'll see I have a lot more case results showing up and I'm getting more case results in California as well. So now when I come over and show you my Ravel view, you'll see um, the top 75 cases are being pulled um, to show you the more influential cases in California for this issue. So I've got these two big bubbles here. They're telling me that these two cases, and you'll see them, their names are popping up over here. Um, these two cases are the ones that are most influential uh, regarding this particular issue. This is a widely used issue um, in law to sue, but um, we do we are getting a few cases here, and I definitely want to take a look at these bigger bubbles. All right, um, back to the beginning. We're going to run another search now. Let's say that for Taylor, we needed to run a summary judgment. We need to file for summary judgment. So um, we've have a lawsuit against us regarding the interference with business relations and we want to file a summary judgment motion against them. So I've run my search and you'll see again that those practical guidance materials are populating here. So I can come right in and check out some of these practice notes and it will tell me all about how to make a federal um, summary judgment motion and more materials and strategies that I might want to take a look at. Of course, I can be more specific to my jurisdiction by typing, click, clicking jurisdiction and putting in California. And now I've got summary judgment information for the state of California. So if I'm about to make a motion in the state of California, I'd want to take a look at this. Now, this uh, is actually really helpful. Um, it's written by Jim Wagstaff. You're going to see his name all over Lexis. He's famous for um, civil procedure issues and evidentiary issues, um, civil litigation. Uh, not only does he provide you all this information on filing summary judgment motions, but often, and you'll see if I scroll down, you will even get uh, videos that he's embedded to tell you more about um, this topic. So I don't see any of those videos here, but generally when you see his name, you'll see some videos popping up as well um, that you can get a quick video talk on the particular issue you're looking at. Now there's related content. So if I know next I'm going to need to file a, a form, then I can come right over to forms and decide what type of summary judgment form I need to make um, if I'm going to file in California. So here is a checklist, something I might want to pop open if I'm about to do this. I need a checklist of all the things I need to do. And of course, forms and formatting rules and all these things are here for me. And if I want to go about it the other way, I can always hit my back browser and find those practical materials here as well by going to forms, clauses, and checklists. So now I'm in um, some summary judgment forms as well for the state of California. So please know um, these things are here for you. Uh, you can feel more confident that you've got the materials you need to actually go on and do practice 
this legal e legal issue as well. Um, not only do you have these forms here, but they'll be drafting notes just as if Jim Wagstaff was sitting next to you giving you advice. So uh, alternative clauses that you may want to think about. All these things are sitting here for you under um, Lexis Plus under practical guidance. So I could have gone in through legal research and used my two new databases that I'm checking out. So the these two, or I could have gone into practical guidance and asked my questions right here and typed in summary judgment here and seen those same results. The last thing I want to show you before we close is the brief analysis tool where you can upload your own briefs. The first thing I need to do is drag a brief into here or drop a brief into here. So I'm going to browse really quickly um, and come on up. I have a brief sample brief here that we can take a look at. and I'll go ahead and upload it. You can see that Lexis is scanning that source right now. It's extracting the citations, concepts. It's gonna do some analysis for me, and it's going to help me not only spot where some of my um, quotes may be misquoted, where perhaps I don't have the best um, blue book citations. Um, I will get a list of all the documents that I'm citing. I'll be able to shepherdize them quickly. I'll be able to expand my research and go into some of the case recommendations that it's providing me if I need more information. I'll be able to pull similar briefs straight off Lexis. These are real briefs that have been filed that have similar legal concepts to what is in my document. So if I am starting a brief on my own, I can upload it and get this extra research right at my fingertips by using brief analysis. And again, back on the main screen, that's right here. Thanks for your time and thanks for watching me. Email me if you have any questions.